All right, welcome back. In the last session, we learned about storage trigger. Uh, that's one of the offering from Azure Data Factory wherein you could just um, initiate Azure Data Factory pipeline whenever a new file uh, lands up into your blob storage. And that's what, happen. that's what going to happen in the production workload as well. You're not going to click around the GUI and initiate your pipeline manually from the Azure Data Factory. In this session, we're going to learn about Databricks and Data Factory integration. So uh, data engineers or scientists who server writing Spark code into Azure Data Factory to churn out uh, raw data, some meaningful data from the raw data, whether it's CSV, Parquet, uh, JSON uh, or text file and you want to run some transformation and you have created your notebook now once you've created your notebook you want to make sure that uh, all of them are automated using the Azure Data Factory pipeline and that's what we're going to do so what we're going to do is at the moment we've got only one uh, pipeline I'm going to create a new one so just like we did it for move uh, files we're going to do it for data fact data breaks also so i'm going to click on data breaks and at the moment we've got only two templates one of them is transformation with azure data breaks and that's what we are going to use it's going to have uh, three initial steps availability fact file to blob and transformation uh, we also have a sync data folder which is created this is where all of the files uh, churned file or the transformed file would be kept over here so that the uh, data breaks notebook can be used so if you go to the uh, data breaks i have already got a notebook so if i go to the workspace click on the transformation i do have a transformation notebook which uh, holds some uh, cells and underneath that cell, cell we have got certain um, uh, spark code written in python over here it what it does it it uses the storage account mount the storage account it lists all the data underneath the mounted folder now it's going to read the file and then it um, does some transformation on top of it then it runs some sql queries uh, wherein it uh, uses the column certain column and run, uh, run some transformation on top of that and at the end of the session it it actually writes all of the data uh, in the csv file format on to the folder blob storage which we have created and all of this is going to be run using azure data factory we're not gonna uh, click around over here and click on uh, enter shift enter uh, not gonna just run it manually in that because that's not going to happen in a production workload so i'm going to come back to my uh, transformation pipeline i am going to create a new link service now my link service going to have uh, this is the source where all of the files would be coming from so what i'm going to do is i'm going to use a public uri uh, this is where all of the source file exists i'm using an azure public blob storage I'm going to test the connection once the connection is successful I'm going to hit on created all of the steps which we have already done in previous video the new one one was that we are using an Azure uh, blob storage public blob storage now I'm going to use the um, destination file which is going to be my Azure blob storage which I'm going to use right over here source code df and I'm going to test the connection hit on create that's going to create a link service for the destination folder and now the transformation this is the fun part which we're going to learn now this is going to be a link service between uh, data factory and data break so that they both can communicate with each other and then data factory can initiate those notebooks onto data bricks so what i'm going to do is i'm going to use all of these are pretty standard um, selection um, i'm going to select the subscription where my workspace uh, data bricks workspace exist i'm going to use an existing interactive cluster because i've got only one and to communicate uh, data factory to communicate with data bricks we need an access token um, so to generate the access token go to your data bricks notebook or console click on the user setting generate a new token copy the token come back into your data factory paste the token right over here and then select the cluster I have got only one cluster at the moment which is test 
I'm going to test the connection. This should be successful. Once it's done, I'm going to hit on create. And that's going to use all of the parameter. I'm going to use this template. Once this template has been successfully created, I just going to validate whether all of the uh, parameters are right on point or not. So this is there's input folder, output folder. This is going to validate all of these are going to created into our Azure blob storage right over here. Once the transformation is completed, then the copy data activity that's going to copy the data from source to the destination, which we have created in our link service and then the transformation. If you will click on the transformation, um, go to the Azure data breaks, test the connection again if needed be. Uh, once it's successful, go to the setting and select the notebook which you want to run. If I click on the browse section and go to the user, I should have a couple of users right over here. I'm going to select the appropriate user and I'm going to select the notebook. So I'm going to select the transformation notebook which I just showed you a couple of minutes back right over here. If you see workspace transformation, this is what we're going to run right from there. This particular notebook. Come back over here, validate whether your notebook path is right or not. Make sure that your base parameter has all the input and output file name. What I'm going to do is now trigger the pipeline. And as soon as I triggered the pipeline, it is going to start from the availability flag. Check if um, the run all the validation and then it is going to move on to the next step which is the file to blob which is going to copy the source uh, files from source to destination files copy has been done successfully if i hit on refresh now it's running the transformation so if you just uh, click on the um, spectacle sign over here it gives you an url now if you go to the url you can see the live logs what's happening in the background in your data breaks notebook so it has started to run it it ran it quickly ran it in 0 0.05 second now it's running this particular command wherein it's mounting the blob storage this is going to take few seconds um, all of these commands going to run after this is particular this particular command has been run because mounting is the most important part because that's where databricks is going to run read the files from so if you see the mounting has been completed um, it listed down all the files underneath it and it's ran the transformation and it again ran the transformation and now what's gonna it's going to do is it's gonna copy all the files whatever it has uh, transformed to a particular folder uh, file uh, which we have created which is sync data if you go to the sync data and hit on refresh we should have something coming up right away if you see the process data sync uh, the state sync and the uh, processed sync file are right over here which was not earlier there come back to our um, notebook again um, it's running the last command which is the unmounted it has uh, ran all the cells successfully now if you go to your azure data factory and if we hit refresh uh, within a few seconds it should say that it has able to complete the transformation and here it is the transformation has been completed um, it ran the availability flag first, copied all the files uh, from the source to the destination and then it used the notebook uh, for the transformation. So this is how you could just integrate your Databricks notebook with Data Factory instead of running the notebooks manually from the GUI um, that certainly happens. You could just use the Azure um, data factory so whenever a new files or folder lands up into a particular blob storage your transformation would trigger automatically just using the um, storage trigger and then your transformation would happen and then you can visualize whatever transformation you have written in your notebook i hope this was uh, informative i'll see you in a while thank you